Here are some tips on how to ace your research proposal defense. A research proposal is like a plan on how you want to carry out your research to solve a particular problem. Proposal is usually made up of your chapter one to three of your whole work. Your whole work, your project work is made up of chapters one to five, depending on your institution. Here in Nigeria, many use chapters one to five. And so your proposal consists of your chapter one to three. Chapter one, which contains the background and all that information that's the introductory section of your work the chapter two is usually the literature review and the chapter three is the methodology aspect of your work keeping all this in mind in order to ace your proposal defense you should just note that you are just trying to convince your assessors or panelists why you should carry out that particular research topic and how you are going to do so. That's all. If you keep this in mind, it will make you less nervous and be able to focus on the goal of the research proposal. After presenting your proposal, the first thing you are going to be asked is why do you want to carry out that topic? That's the first thing they usually ask in any defense. This is where you prove to them the importance of your topic by stating the statement of problem or and the justification to justify why you are doing that topic. For example, if you have picked, you picked a topic on, um, you know, knowledge or awareness of breast cancer among um, women in a particular location, why do you want to look at breast cancer? I'll start by saying that um, the prevalence of breast cancer globally and the prevalence of breast cancer in that particular region. Can even relate your experience or your topic to your personal experience. Maybe your family member died due to breast cancer and the things that came um, with it. or someone else's experience that you have learned from. Just try to justify why you should, why you want to do that topic. Remember, it's a proposal. It's why you want to. Okay, you have not yet carried out the work. It's why you want to carry out that particular research topic. After finding out why you want to carry out that topic, the next thing you're going to be asked is, what do you want to look at specifically in that topic? In breast cancer, for example, what do you want to focus on? Because there are a lot of aspects to breast cancer. There's awareness, there's um, prevalence, there's um, practice of um, preventive measures and knowledge of different things. The next thing I'm going to be asked is, what exactly do you want to look at? And these are your specific objectives. I'm going to tell them specifically what you want to look at. You should have around three to five um, specific objectives depending on your level, whether you're an undergraduate or a postgraduate student. Keep in mind, you're not just going to state your specific objectives, but you have to kind of relate it to you your you know trying you remember you're trying to convince them okay so if you want to look at awareness okay you're going to say that okay you want to look at the level of awareness of breast cancer among this particular group of women because you have found that that okay that um some women this has to be backed up okay with research articles studies they are not properly aware of breast cancer and the risks that are involved and therefore that's why you can link it to why the prevalence prevalence rate is high. So don't just state it. After stating it, you are going to explain um, how it's kind of connected to your statement of problem. I hope you get it. The next thing they are going to ask you is your theoretical framework and conceptual framework, particularly your theoretical framework. You want to know the theory that you use to back up your research. To ace this aspect of, of this question, you are not just going to say, oh, you use this particular theory. You have to state why you, you are going to use that theory to back up your, your research. You are also going to say why that theory is better than the other theories to back up your research. You can compare that theory to other theories that you have found that are similar and you say the differences and why you actually focus on that theory. If you are going to use more than one theory, if it's allowed, then you tell them why you decided to use two instead of one. You are not just going to stop there. You are going to say how that theory actually applies to your work. So that's part of when you are stating the reason of why you are using that theory. The next aspect your assessors are going to focus on is your methodology, how you intend to actually carry out 
that research. They are going to be addressing each of the sections under that chapter, all of them, or most of them at least. The first thing under the methodology is the research design. Which design did you, do you intend to use for your study? And um, there are so many designs. To ace your defense, you are going to say the particular one you want to use and why you want to use it. You have to be able to know the definition which studies are linked to that type of research design and why you are not using other types of research design. For example, if it's a cross-sectional um, research design you are going to use, you know that it's because you want to do, you want to do that study in a particular, within a particular period of time compared to a cohort study, which um, given your research, for example, if it's an undergraduate um, project um, um, research, you don't have enough time to actually carry out a cohort study. Anyway, it depends on the topic. You are going to also relate that research design to your research topic and your specific objectives. The next thing they will be looking at is your area of study, okay? You have to define where you want to carry out your study and why you have chosen that particular location. When you are talking about that, you talk about everything or the major things concerning that location and try to narrow it down. For example, if you are dealing with um, something in Abia State or um, any other state within Nigeria, for example, you talk about the state, then you narrow it down to the local government area. And if it's a hospital setting, of course, you narrow it down to that particular hospital, talking about the department and all that. Make sure you cover everything and um, including why you actually, you actually chose that location. Okay. Looking at your population of study, you have to know, of course, for your research topic, your population is already defined. You have to also know the population size and you should get the right um, um, population size. Don't just say it's an estimated, you can say it's estimated, but how did you estimate it? They want to know how you estimated the population. You have to refer to the census, get um, correct backing for whatever number you are going to give. If the population is unknown, you have to make sure that you are, you are ensured that it is unknown and not that you say it's unknown. Meanwhile, if checked, it's actually known. So you have to find out if it's known um, and what the actual um, population size is. For the sample size, you have to know the formula you use or you use to calculate the sample size. If it's taro yamen, there are so many. Why do you intend to use taro yamen, for example? So you have to state the reason why you are using that formula. You can say maybe because it's for a known population or known, and you have to tell them why you chose that formula compared to the other formulas that are out there. Also want to know how to properly calculate that um, sample size using the particular formula you have chosen. You should know the meaning of each of the symbols and what it equates to you know your population size if it's on if it's known um, or unknown and other um, symbols that are within your formula um, your sample size formula the next thing they want to know is how you intend to get your respondents that's the sampling procedure in order to ace this aspect you should know the different sampling procedures that are out there and why you chose the particular one within your work and how you intend to use the particular one you chose okay for example um if it's more than one um, sampling um, method that you chose you have to state that it's a multi um, sampling that you did and they will ask you why you chose that and how you intend to actually pick you know select the actual respondents to answer that you should also note that it depends on your level there are some sampling um, methods or procedures that are um, allowed for a certain level the graduates are allowed to do convenient sampling or um, probability sampling and we have known probability you have to find out um, if you're a postgraduate, the one you are supposed to use and the one you are meant not to use because you are on a higher um, level. And it also depends on your department or institution. So these are things you find out before you choose whatever um, sampling procedure that you want to use. You also want to know whether the sampling um, method aligns with your kind of study, the study you want to carry out with your research design. Okay, you also have to find out about that. For a sample size, you also want to know um, it's not all studies that um, need a particular sample size. Okay, you can sample 
all the people in your population, all the respondents in your population. It depends on your study and your research design and also on your level, whether you're an undergraduate and postgraduate. An undergraduate student might not be able to do 1,000 respondents, for example, while a postgraduate student do intend or want the person, especially PhD level, to do um, 1,000 or more um, respondents. So you have to find out whether your sample, what the requirements of your department is and what is allowed for you as an undergraduate or postgraduate. Students. So if you are sampling all the respondents in your study, that's the whole population, you have to tell them why. And if you are selecting a few, you have to also tell them why. It all depends on your population size as well. That's why it's important to also know your population size in that location. Next is your instrument for data collection. This also depends on your research design and your study and your objectives, your specific objectives. Here, if you want to ease this aspect, you have to know the different um, instruments that can be used for your study, why you did not choose the other instruments, okay? You should re be ready to convince your assessors why you chose that particular instrument how, and how you intend to use the instrument to collect data from the respondents. You also want to say how the um, instrument explain how it's sectioned, you know, how it's divided into different sections and um, how it's going to be filled as well. How it's also going to be administered to the respondents. Some combined um, 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 method of data collection with this aspect as well. So you also want to cover that. Are you going to give the respondents to fill it by themselves or are you going to help the respondents to fill it? And it also has to do with um, the language, okay? The type of respondents, um, kind of respondents you have. Do they understand English? Are you going to interpret for them? Are you going to use research assistance? And it also depends on your level of study. Okay, for undergraduates, you might not expect you to use research assistance, and the postgraduates are expected to use research assistance. You have to explain all this and why you intend to do it the way you want to do it and why you are not using the other methods out there or other instruments of data collection. Next aspect is the validity and the reliability of your instruments of data collection. So they want to know how you validated your instrument and how you ensured that it's actually reliable. Here you want to just explain that and how you intend to do that. This is to ensure that your instrument can be used properly for your study. The next aspect is data analysis. They want to know how you intend to analyze your data and why you you um, choose the thing or whatever formats you want to use to analyze your data. This will depend on your research design as well, okay? And the software that you use, you are going to state, oh, you are using SPSS or you are using um, Excel, Microsoft Excel, and um, why you intend to use that, which version you want you want to use. Are you going to use inferential statistics? Why are you going to use inferential statistics? Which particular inferential statistics? Are you going to use which um, descriptive statistics do you want to use? Why do you want to use it? Why did you leave the others? So you are going to relate this back to your research question, your research hypothesis, and um, explain why you intend to use that and how you want to use um, that as well. Lastly, they want to know your budget and um, the timeline. They want to know how much um, you, you spend, how you intend to spend on your research um, your research work. You also want to know how, when, and how you intend to carry out that research work. Looking at the timeline, they will check if the timeline is enough. Does it rhyme with your research design? Like I said, if it's cohort, it will definitely take a longer period of time to cover. We'll check, okay, is it okay for an undergraduate or a postgraduate and all that. Additional tips include trying to convince them. If you keep that in mind, you are going to be talking in a convincing tone not in an argumentative tone. In a convincing tone. They're trying to convince them, so don't go there and start arguing. And you should be ready to listen to their opinions and um, try to clarify their doubts and um, try to get them to see your view. Do it in a conversational manner. Don't go there and be scared or be annoyed or 
be silent express your view know when to shut up and when to answer um, questions if you are not clear on the questions being asked you can say tell them that you are not clear if they can um, if they can explain it to you then they'll go ahead to explain it to you but if you go there to start arguing with them they can um, leave you to your own opinion and that will actually affect your study because along the line you might discover that they were actually right and it might be too late to um, fix that problem or you end up redoing your whole work from the beginning another tip is that you should make sure that when you're speaking that you are confident that you are speaking do not make it look as if another person did your work or you are not sure of what you wrote this is why it's very important to read your whole work make sure you know everything about that work and other works that are related to your work so that you can confidently answer any questions that you may be asked the last tip is to ensure that you record your defense okay so that you note down the correction also get somebody to write your corrections for you and also be with a notepad to also write down your correction note down every correction every comment that was made on your work and make sure that you do it according to the sections that were corrected in your work this might look like a simple um tip or most students actually forget to actually note down the corrections and at the end of the day it affects their study and they end up getting low grades or they end up redoing their work again my prayer for you is that it will not be your portion good luck in your defense Don't forget to like share follow subscribe to my channel see you in my next video Cheers.